Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. In the last video, we talked about the psoas muscle and how it helps you when things get intense. But it's never just one muscle doing all the work. Stress triggers a full body response. It's automatic, it's instinctive, and it's designed to protect you. Before the psoas gets even involved, your body does something else first. So imagine you're walking through an open field and you feel relaxed and then suddenly you hear something. You stop dead in your tracks, you look around and scan the area and then you realize you might have a problem. There's a hungry little friend waiting for you and he's coming at you. Boy, he's coming at you fast. In a split second, your body shifts from relaxed mode into full-on survival mode because now it's about staying alive. And the decision to act, to run or to escape, that starts while you're doing something called orienting. See, the moment you feel something is off, your body shifts into alert mode. Your breathing pattern changes, your neck muscles engage, your head and eyes move automatically without you thinking about it because detecting a threat early can mean the difference between safety and danger. This reflex is one of our most essential tools. It's hardwired into our biology to help us detect threats and act quickly. But before you can run or fight, you first have to sense what's happening. That's exactly what this reflex does. It helps you to orient. Without it, we wouldn't have made it this far. It's one of the reasons we are still here today and it's still built into us, ready to protect us when it matters the most. Only now, the bear isn't in the forest, it's our inbox, our deadlines, that next presentation or the argument you didn't want to have. The threat looks different, but our bodies still respond in the same way. And here's the challenge. This system doesn't just switch off, it stays active. We remain on high alert and the tension it builds, especially in the neck. Because we're not just dealing with tight muscles, we're responding with a survival system that's still doing exactly what it was built to do. Protect us from anything that feels like danger. Now let's look at the anatomy. What actually happens in your neck when your body senses stress? A few muscles play a major role in how we detect and respond to threats the suboccipitals, the sternocleidomastoid, and the upper trapezius, for example. The suboccipitals are small, deep muscles at the base of your skull. They stabilize your head and make fine adjustments, helping you fix your gaze and fine-tune visual tracking. The sternocleidomastoid turns and tilts your head. It engages quickly to help you orient towards movement or sound. The upper trapezius lifts your shoulders and braces the back of your neck. It prepares your upper body for protective reactions like freezing or shielding. Together, these muscles act as a rapid response system, helping you scan, assess, and react. But here's the challenge. Your nervous system doesn't know whether the danger is real or imagined. It just reacts. That's why these muscles activate even in everyday stress. A sudden deadline, a tense conversation, or speaking in front of a crowd. And once they are activated, they don't always let go. These muscles can hold on for hours, days, or even longer. So here's what most people don't realize. Once your sympathetic nervous system is triggered, once hormones like adrenaline and cortisol are released, your body expects you to move. Fight, flee, do something. But what happens in modern life? We sit, we internalize, we try to think our way out of it. But you can't mentally override stress hormones. Just like you can't think away alcohol when you're drunk, your body has to metabolize it. If you don't move, that survival energy stays in your system and it often shows up as chronic muscle tension, especially in the neck. If your neck always feels tight, stretching alone won't fix it because this isn't just a physical issue, it's a neurobiological loop. Movement can be one of the most effective ways to help the body complete a stress response. Even something simple like a short walk may help signal that the threat has passed. 
Shaking out your arms, shoulders, or head can reset motor patterns that were locked during freeze or bracing. And adding resistance, pushing, pulling, lifting, can mirror the actions your body was primed to take but never completed. Of course, you can try these out and see what works for you. In many cases, those actions help shift your system out of alert mode. Without movement, that cycle may stay active, just running quietly in the background. And remember, it's not just big stress that builds tension. Your nervous system is constantly responding to what you do all day. If you're always on, your body stays ready for action. Gentle neck mobility drills can help interrupt that loop. Slow eye movements side to side may stimulate the vagus nerve and promote down regulation. Even short breaks, just 30 seconds to look around and breathe, can be enough to reset your internal cues. These small shifts tell your brain, I'm safe now. But regulation doesn't just come from what you do occasionally. It's also shaped by how you move, sit and carry yourself all day long. Your posture isn't just passive, it's part of the conversation between your body and your brain. Posture doesn't just reflect how you feel, it shapes how your nervous system behaves. When your head is forward, your shoulders are tense and your eyes are locked on the screen, your body sends a signal, stay ready, even if there's nothing to react to. Your brain reads these postural cues the same way it would during an actual threat, keeping you in a low level state of alert. Noticing these patterns won't fix everything, but it gives you something to work with. A clear starting point to interrupt the loop. Start small. Just roll your shoulders. Lift your chest. Let your head come back over your spine. These subtle shifts change your internal signals and your nervous system will begin to recalibrate. You have to understand, your neck isn't malfunctioning. It's doing exactly what it was designed to do. It's trying to protect you. But if that system never gets to relax, the tension stays locked in. So to break the cycle, don't just stretch, move with purpose, reset your signals often. And ask yourself, is my body holding on to something it thinks it still needs to survive? Because that tension in your neck, it's not random. It's the echo of a reflex that once kept you alive and now just needs permission to let go. I think that's everything I've got for you on this topic today. I hope you make peace with your bear. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, subscribe or follow me on Instagram. I always look forward to reading your comments, so let me know what you think about the whole thing. If you're a company interested in sponsoring a video, be sure to reach out and I'll see you soon back inside the lab.